Hello and welcome back to Paloma Valley. In the last episode, we made a start on this district over the river. It's got its own dedicated train station and metro station. It looks a little bit odd at the moment because it's literally just the center of the town for now. We really needed to get the population up to 18,000 for last episode so that we could get to the next milestone. So I just zoned in all the housing and popped a bit of commercial, gave them a few schools and called it a day with that district because the main thing we did in last episode was adding in a metro system. Now the metro system has a stop in pretty much every single residential district. It's really helped with the traffic, especially people coming out of the train station, but it's still not perfect so it's going to be a work in progress. We also started a trade school campus area. As I've been doing this intro, it did actually get to the end of its first year and unfortunately we are still unrecognised. We have enough students and the campus is attractive enough but we just haven't produced enough academic works yet so I need to up the budget and give them another grant to get that second piece of work in. We also finished off the edges of the suburban districts with adding more roads and more houses and filling in the gaps with pathways and trees. I also worked a bit more on the hotel chain in the last episode. I added in five new hotels so that we can have them building up money in the background and hopefully get to the point where we have enough weekly income to reach the next level of the hotel chain. I really want to get to level 5 of the hotel chain so that we have all of them available because I'm definitely going to be using some of the different hotel types in various builds in the future. In this episode I'm going to be building more on the district over the river. I want to add as much as I can into that district while still being thoughtful and including things like parks and unique buildings and making sure that the public transport system is working properly. I have a lot of money in the bank now and I feel like we can splurge a bit on trying to get some more people in and the more people we have the more money it will be bringing in anyway. I will be going back to Pine Square and I'm going to be doing a lot of changes. I'm really not happy with the way that the main square looks and while I was editing the last episode I realized how bad it looks in comparison to all the other districts so I'm going to be redoing the whole town center to give it a bit more life and personality. I'm also going to be doing some admin in this episode because we are now 10 episodes in and most of our districts still have the generic names on them and unfortunately I haven't had many comments with name suggestions so I'm just going to be doing them myself and I had a great set of comments from Maya Bones the other day and one of them pointed out that two of the naturally generated names are names of vampires from various different vampire universes so I think I'm going to lean into that and give this place a little bit of lore so I expect to see a lot of Twilight references and the names coming up I'm going to be keeping an eye on my public transport levels as we go through the episode because they do fluctuate quite a lot. Before starting this episode I did go through and reduce the number of vehicles on some of the lines because we just didn't need them anymore but I'm sure that I'll have to increase them at least once throughout this episode. When it comes to buying a new tile I might not end up doing that in today's episode because we actually still have quite a lot of usable space in the tiles we already have. I didn't realise how much of this piece of land we actually had available. We've got a whole piece here and obviously we've used a part of it for the train line but there's a massive amount of land down here that we can build on and there's a train line running through it and a beach. So actually we can do quite a lot with that tile before having to buy another one. The only downside is that we don't have a highway connection for that. So it would be adding more traffic going through Strawberry Flats and onto the highway connection up here, but we may be able to make it more appealing to come in via train or metro instead. My gut right now is telling me to go for this tile here because it has the main interchange, we get access to the higher part of Queen's Meadow and it has a stretch of highway that we can add an interchange to and build on this piece of land here. So the biggest thing they want right now is industry. We did actually get to level five of the farming industry quite a while ago, I think it was two episodes ago now, but we haven't added anything new to it in a long time. So the first thing I'm gonna do today is actually add some more assets to the farm. We don't actually have masses of space to be working with because it's kind of boxed in by a hill a mountain, a river and a highway. So I'm going to have to be quite careful with how I place these items. We've got a little bit of space to work with over here but that's actually where the highway comes in and out so I don't really want to add too much to those roads because it could potentially get quite busy. It is doing all right at the moment. They're not having to import any products, they're not having any problems with output and it's a decent profit level at the moment so I'm only going to add a small amount in, possibly some barracks so that I can up the efficiency again and just leave this running in the background to get us more money so we can spend it on other stuff. One thing we don't have yet is a slaughterhouse but this asset is huge so we may have to move some stuff around in this section here and the roads as well because it's slightly wider than this section of road. Maybe move these other assets to a different part just so we can fit this slaughterhouse in. It's 
a little bit of an odd shape now having these two little roads going out into what is basically just a train track but like I said these assets are really big and there's not really anywhere else I can put them especially with the slaughterhouse house being so large and already having to move the roads for it I think that is just about the right size I never actually noticed that this one is slightly longer on one side at the back than the other one is I don't like the fact this grass is just sitting here I think I might fill it in with the gravel just to get rid of that weird grassy area and that will do from a distance that doesn't look too bad so we'll just ignore the clipping and the fact that it's not a straight line down there so we can move on to something else trying to fit these all in without them clipping each other i think this is about as good as i'm going to get because vehicles can still get in there if they need to so what is my efficiency at now 86 percent that's pretty good adding in the slaughterhouse will also help with the animal products the profit has gone down a little bit but it's because we've added lots of new buildings. I'm sure that it will balance itself out after a while. They're having electricity issues over here and I've just realized it's because I've left them with just one solar panel set that only puts out 16 megawatts. It's probably not enough for this whole district so I need to give them another power source even if it's just a temporary one that provides them with a little bit more. My go-to is to just plop a solar updraft tower wherever they need it because it produces so much electricity but it is very very tall and it does stick out like a sore thumb. If I'm gonna be expanding this part, I may as well add a solar updraft tower, even if it is just a temporary one. I need to add it somewhere where the grid is as well, so it might just have to go over here for now. I'm sorry to everyone who thinks it's ugly to just put power sources in the middle of the city, but it is a temporary measure, don't worry. So I'm gonna come back to this district in a bit, and for now, I'm going to be working on Pine Square to make it more appealing for people to come here because I'm very, very disappointed with the lack of visitors that we get in this district. I wanted it to be a destination to come to, but I don't seem to be doing it right. So at the moment, this district has the leisure commercial type, but I actually found from my Calathea City build that these commercial buildings are actually some of the worst looking in my opinion. So I think I'm going to do a bit of plopping in this district. I don't want to do too much in this game because it is very, very time intensive. Like one of my recent Calathea episodes took over six hours to film and even longer to edit. So I'm going to remove all of the commercial. I'm also going to change some of the facility buildings and just start from a clean slate. I also really want to sort out this bus stop here because these people have been stuck here for ages and ages and they're not going anywhere. There's no bus stop here anymore. So I think I might remove the road, put it on play for a moment and see if that fixes it. It appears that the people are still there. So I'm not really sure what to do. It's really frustrating that these people are just stood here. See, it's put the bus stop back in. There is no bus stop there. There's no, there's no bus stop there. The bus does not go down that road anymore and yet it still thinks that there is like some legacy bus stop. Maybe if I put the bus stop there and remove it again, that might work possibly. Nope, bus stop is still there. If anyone knows how I can stop this from happening, please let me know. There's a couple of bits of commercial around here that I'm gonna remove. I'm also gonna remove this crematorium and put a different one in. I might actually use the one that comes with the game because I didn't like how that other one sat with this district. And this one actually fits in perfectly here, so. That will just be backing up against this medical center and the clinic itself. I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna put in a much nicer one that I got from the workshop. This one here is a medium sized medical center. It's a little bit bigger, but I feel like it fits with that kind of medical complex vibe. And uh, the positive impacts are quite wide reaching. They went all the way over here. So that feels a little bit better than what was there before. I might also connect these roads up just so they have multiple ways of getting through to this part. Hopefully that'll put a little bit less stress on that junction there. The other thing I need to do is add police and fire back into this district. So I'm going to add in a fire station down here again. This one is actually from the same collection as the medical center that I've just put in. So this works quite well. It's a very small lot and doesn't take up that much space and I can actually move it underneath this bridge as well just to get a little bit more space. Yeah, that works quite well. That's not clipping or anything. I actually have this very, very small police rural station and the style of this building actually reminds me of the houses in this district with the very flat roof and the kind of overhang. But I think I'm gonna just squish these up against each other here and have the police and fire in one place. 
So by plopping the buildings rather than having them zone in, I may be able to fill in the corners of this square so that they're not so empty. I don't want to go too tall. I might add a few of the leisure buildings back in just to keep the original thought alive, but I'm going to try and pick buildings that look like they should go with the mid-century modern or art deco styles. Oh, I'm not happy with this at all, really. It doesn't really feel that much better than it was before. It's such an awkward shape to work with. I know that I said when I built this that I really like working with a square in the centre of the town, but I think I actually prefer the inside of the square to the outside because it is an absolute nightmare to build on, especially when you've got four lane roads. So I've pretty much ended up putting down a lot of what I removed, but I tried to be a little bit more thoughtful about where I put it. But honestly, this district is a write-off in my eyes. I hate it so much. I didn't realise how few assets there were to pick from in these kind of building styles. I actually love building with the campus commercial buildings because they're really really sleek and really smart and I think there's some more over this side as well. Yeah they're very simple. I actually took all of the billboards and stuff off of these ones with the bob tool for my Calathea series so they look a little bit emptier than usual but they actually go quite well with the mid-century modern theme so they've got similar aspects to the houses around here so I think they probably go better than anything else but like I said this is a write-off this district and all of these people are still waiting for a bus that doesn't exist kind of tempted to put a bus stop back in over here and see if that helps. Maybe if I drag this one down and put a bus stop back in there, maybe some of those people will actually get on the bus now. But who knows? This might be a bug that I just don't know about. So maybe it's happening all over the place and I don't even realise. It looks like there's more people using this tube now, which I'm very happy about. Okay, so 25 people just got off of that metro train into this district, so they must be going somewhere. It's better than it was last episode, I can see there's some people waiting at the other stop as well. So it is getting better, but it's still not where I want it to be. I've just given the university another grant and up the academic staff to 12. A lot of money a week just to have the academic work creation chance at less than 50% but I still only have one academic work and I need two to be able to get to the next level so we've got enough students we've got enough campus attractiveness points we need that next piece of work and we're nearly halfway through the year so hopefully if I can get it by the end of this year we might be able to level up in this episode who knows so let's come back over to this district and do a little bit more building. I think one of the last things we did in the last episode was add this recycling centre underneath the train tracks and obviously this is kind of just here for now and it's not going to be there permanently. And the same with the solar updraft tower. So it does kind of feel like it's just sitting really really tall with nothing else around it. So I'm going to do some stepping down around the edges and try and make it into a fully formed district. We've got a lot of space to work with and they actually have quite a high demand for industry at the moment. So what I'm gonna do in this district is I'm gonna add some offices. We haven't really officially added any offices into this map yet, apart from one or two in this little section over here, but those two have removed themselves. So it may not be the best idea to add them now, I guess we've had the university for a while so we might be educated enough maybe. So it looks like nearly half of the population is highly educated which is pretty good and that's what the offices are mostly going to need. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some offices along the back of this train line here to add a buffer to the flats over here. Now I am going to plop these mainly because the assets are so different in size and some of them are really ugly. So I am going to put these in manually so that I don't end up with a bunch of really badly spawned ugly buildings. And like usual, this will be a mix of assets from the workshop and vanilla assets. This building here is actually one of my favorite office assets and it's a vanilla building, but it goes really well with the brick buildings over here. And it actually fits in quite well with the recycling depot there. So I think I might add some in this section here to kind of blend this building in so we don't need to move it. I'm gonna add a couple there and kind of move them together to make it look like it's one unit. It won't matter that they're slightly overlapping. I'm trying to do a few of the same building and then a different one and then a few of the same and then a different one to make sure that the skyline is interesting but not too samey samey. I actually just decided I don't like this building, so let's remove that one. So I need to find a larger building to put in this space to give a bit of variation to the skyline. 
but not one that's too big. Maybe this one will do. I really love the windows on this building and I think it would look great coming through on the train, seeing that right next to the tracks. So that is a much better choice. These two buildings actually go so well together. Even though this is a waste depot and this is an office, I'm gonna actually put these right up against each other even though there's assets in the middle. No parking spaces or anything, so there's not gonna be cars clipping out of the buildings. And hopefully that will make that building look a bit more like an office than a waste depot. So if we've got brick stuff on this side and then very clean, crisp white buildings on this side, we kind of need to transition them in the middle somehow. I don't want it to just be like one style, then the other style. Okay, so that's probably about as good as I'm gonna get. Although now that these are all up in a line, I really don't like this one here. So let's remove that, replace it. I feel like I'm just gonna keep going away from this, realizing that I hate it, coming back, deleting something, and then starting the whole process over again. So probably won't be the last you see of this particular part because I'm just so uninspired by all of these assets. And I've got some really amazing assets, but they're just not working how I want them to work. They're either not tall enough or they're too tall or they're too wide and I have been a little bit creative with some of them and I have uh, smushed some together and turned some sideways when I probably shouldn't have but hopefully it won't cause any issues. I could put down a modern city centres piece but I wonder if any of them will actually go with this district style and they'll look a little bit odd from the train side. That corner piece could work. I move it so that it's just touching that building. Yay! We leveled up in the university. Oh, I'm so happy about that. We got three academic works, so giving them that grant and adding more stuff actually really helped. So I've got four new things to add. Let's see what they did. They revolutionized the hotel industry and made feathery hats. I'm not sure I would count that as an academic work, but if it's what got me to the next level, then I don't really care. Great, I'll go over and do some work on the campus in a moment. So that building might actually just have to stay with that odd corner piece, but at least it looks all right from the pathway as you walk through. I guess as trains come through, it will look kind of nice. So I'm actually gonna follow this train through to see what it looks like coming through here as a passenger. Obviously it's a freight train, not a passenger train, I wanted to see what the backs of these buildings look like and whether they look nice. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Even the top of the recycling center looks all right. So I'm quite happy with the way that that looks now. Obviously it's not perfect by any means, but it will do. So before I go over to the campus, I'm just gonna add a few more pieces of housing to this district just to get the population up a little bit because it keeps dipping below 18,000. I like to try and keep the blocks as small as possible when doing high rise because the gaps in between can look really rubbish if you don't have them backing up against each other. So this bit up here is going to be a little bit of an issue when it comes to high density but if I just zone the parts that kind of back onto each other I could probably do this bit as well and then have something else in this corner maybe a park of some sort. Before we move away from this district, I'm going to name it something else because these names are going to start to get really repetitive soon. So in honour of my subscriber that pointed out that a lot of these districts so far have had vampire related names in here, I'm going to continue that tradition and name as many of them as I can after various vampires from different fictional works. So I'm going to call this district Carlisle City. I like to have alliteration with my city names, that was something I tried to do every single time in my Parks and Rec City so that works quite well for me and now it has an official name so let's go over to the campus and add some of these new buildings the campus attractiveness level has obviously gone up as has the student requirement but we actually only have capacity for 800 at the moment so we need to add some more buildings in for that anyway but they already have three or four academic works which is great news so they only need to produce one more we might even be able to get to level three by the end of this episode so we now have an outdoor study park a gymnasium, a cafeteria, 
and a fountain. So this is precisely the reason I was leaving these blocks at the front empty because I wanted to put these plaza things in here. So I'm fairly sure we get another one later on. Yeah, we get a statue. So let's put the trade school fountain in here. Pretty neat plaza. The gymnasium is quite a long building, so we kind of need to be careful about where we put it. Otherwise, it's going to end up taking up a lot of space. I'm never really good at planning out these kind of campus builds because I never really know how big the assets are going to be. So planning a roadmap for this kind of thing in advance is actually really difficult. For now, I'll put a little road out here and I will put the gymnasium and tuck it away on this corner. Probably not the nicest building to see as you're coming in, but I didn't want this side to be too tall because it's going to block the view from the rest of the campus otherwise. So I think I'll leave this like this for now. And then the other thing was a cafeteria. Now this isn't as big. I might be able to tuck this back here. Probably a good idea to have it near the dorm anyway. They have enough students to reach the next level now, but we still need to work on the attractiveness. So I think what I'm going to do is add some more dorms. This dorm is nearly full. Obviously not everyone's going to live at the university if they study here. Maybe if we put more capacity down, we might have extra people move in. Once we reach level 5, I'll probably move everything around so that I can fit everything in properly and that it actually looks good. Because at the moment, I'm kind of putting buildings in where I can as I get them, but it doesn't necessarily look good. So I think the last thing we haven't added is the outdoor study space. Whoa, that is very, very big. That doesn't fit in any of these spaces. Maybe I need to move this book club and put it out the back instead. I didn't think it would be that big. Let's move this trade school cafeteria along. Move the book club down next to it. Let's move this terrain back a little bit just so we have more space to be working with. Yeah, that's actually quite a big lot, isn't it? Does this have enough attractiveness now? Oh, we're nearly there. We're 20 points off, right? What small thing can we add from this catalogue? We don't have a police academy yet. It's such a huge building. I don't really know where I'd put it. Let's extend the campus up onto this bit up here. And maybe we can put this police academy out on this flat piece here where it's out of the way. I'm definitely going to need to move some stuff around once I've got everything unlocked. Oh, we are teetering on the edge with our water availability and sewage. Let's add another sewage pump in. Let's make this river even worse. And we need another water pump as well. I'm really surprised that we've gone this whole time with only two water pumps. And we haven't even moved them yet. I'm very surprised that people around aren't complaining about it. So we actually unlocked something at the last milestone that's going to be really useful. And that is the floating garbage collector and they sort out water pollution so we can't put any out here because obviously we don't have this tile but what we can do is we can put one maybe two in the river just where the pumps are so if i open up that screen and put it on fast forward for a bit it might lessen the pollution coming out of these pumps. Maybe I'll put a third one down as well. Kind of not doing anything at all to lessen the pollution there. Maybe it just takes a little bit of time to kick in. What I'm really looking forward to getting is the eco water treatment plant because that doesn't produce any pollution at all, which is perfect. But we don't have that yet, so we're gonna have to wait. I think I've decided on a name for this district. Because it's so awkward and nothing seems to work right and I was getting really frustrated with putting the buildings down and them just not feeling right. I'm going to name it after Bella Swan. She's the most awkward character to ever exist in any media ever. So I'm gonna call this Swan Square. Probably a bit of a weird name, but at least it's not Pine anymore. Another thing we haven't done for our campus yet is add any varsity sports. And I always forget about it because it's on a different screen to the rest of the assets. But we have an aquatic center, a basketball arena, and a track and field stadium. They don't necessarily need to be within the campus area, which is a good thing because I'm very quickly running out of space. But I was wondering if that's what I could have this area for. Because I wasn't quite sure what to put down here, I might add one of the sports venues into this gap here. It will look pretty good as you're coming in on the train and it will fill this gap quite nicely. So both the aquatic centre and the basketball arena fit quite nicely in there. And we actually unlock a baseball park at 19,000 residents. So maybe what I'll do is I'll work on getting up to 19,000 so that we have all four to pick from. I'm going to start building on this side of the station in Carlisle City. It's pretty empty at the moment because they only have the nature reserve down there. 
So I'm going to try and step it down a little bit and have a little bit of high density and then going down into lower density over here. So this will involve plopping and I know I said I wasn't going to do much more of that but to be able to step them down properly I'm going to need to do that. Nice, I reached ground city status. Doesn't really unlock much at this point, just a new energy source, a couple of transport hubs and the baseball park. That's literally it because I never get loans. So it's not the best milestone to get to and the next one is quite a long way off, but the next one unlocks quite a lot of very important things like the eco water treatment plant and another tile for the map. So I'm just gonna finish off this row of high density housing and then go pick which type of varsity sports I'd like to put in. So I've put in just a small row of high density housing down here. I know that people hate these tiny buildings, but I actually love them so much. I would kill to live in a little building like this. Sometimes I feel like the big buildings are a little bit too big. Like this one here is actually a medium sized building compared to some of the others. And I feel like it's still massive, but it is beautiful. I love the way that they're decorated. And I've just done a whole build on Calathea with high rise buildings. And they've been mostly these kind of assets with lots of greenery and wood and brick and concrete and these assets were something that I use quite a lot they're from the workshop and they are just gorgeous look at that greenery spilling out over the balconies and the pool on the roof I want to live there so bad so it's just a small amount of high density so that we can step it down into low density and it won't feel as much of a stark change so some of the buildings are still a little bit tall like these ones here but Hopefully from over this way they don't actually block the view into the rest of the map. It will be more for anything down here that they will kind of cast a bit of a shadow. But it's not like there's going to be any buildings down here for it to block. This bit's going to remain pretty open and empty. So it'll just be for people standing on the station and going through on the train I guess. So let's decide which varsity sports pitch we would like to have. I don't know whether they will actually fit in here because this one looks quite big. Oh, it just about fits in this gap actually. So that's actually quite a decent amount of parking there. I'm just going to move it over ever so slightly so it's in the centre of this part. So now that we've decided what's going on here, I'm going to fill this gap with trees because it will make this pole part feel very complete now. That's really nice to see that it's all completely filled in. I'm not really sure how the games work with this. I've only really played with it a couple of times. I believe we can change the team colour to whatever we want. My YouTube thumbnails are always a purple colour. So I think I will go with a lovely nice light purple. It was the first bus line colour so I feel like it's appropriate. I'm fairly sure we can change the mascot as well but I can't remember how to do that. Let's have a look at the university area because I have a feeling we can do it through here. Maybe we have to have the sports teams on the campus to be able to change them? Oh I've just realised what I've done. It says it can be placed anywhere in the city but by putting it inside the campus area that enables the baseball varsity sports team. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I wonder why I couldn't change the mascot. Okay, so I just tried to make some room in the campus area for this baseball field, but there is not enough room on that piece of the map for this massive, massive asset. So 
for now it's going to have to remain outside of the campus area and just be a regular baseball park but i guess i have the money to put a different type of sports thing in here that's very big as well uh i think i didn't leave myself enough space with this campus area I am now learning that. Wasted too much space on decoration and didn't leave enough space for the actual buildings. So I might have to just dedicate this whole bit down here to the campus area because this isn't even half of the assets in here yet and I'm already running out of space. So let's just bite the bullet and have this whole area as the campus. In my recent Calathea build, I've been working with keys quite a lot. So I might use that in this build to smooth out the edges here and create a little bit of a walkway this is going to be plenty of space for everything else that i need to put down i might move the dormitories down here possibly i feel like it would make more sense to have the dorms away from the main campus area and a little bit more private okay so down here i probably should be optimizing my space a little bit more than i am but i'm obviously not so is that space going to be big enough for a varsity thing uh, no, but it might be big enough for a dorm possibly. So let's put the varsity bit down here. But I think I'm going to go for a basketball arena just because that building is a little bit more grand and it fits in better with the trade school buildings. So while I'm here, I'm going to change the name of the university. As we're in the Castlemead County, this is going to be Castlemead University. And obviously this is going to become the Castle Mead Basketball Arena. And on here we can actually change the colour and the mascot. The real shame they don't have anything to do with vampires because that would be perfect. I think I'm going to go with the Eagles for this one. It was the one that it gave us anyway, but I am definitely going to change the colour to the same lilac that we used for the other team. I really hate how that goes with that blue, but can't really do anything about it. So their first match is actually not that far away, so I guess I need to get them some electricity, otherwise they're probably not going to play the match. I'm just going to chuck down a temporary solar panel farm. Oh, the match was cancelled. I reckon it's because they didn't have enough electricity. While I'm down here, I'm going to move the dorms down to this end. Oh my god, that one had a massive pit under it. What? Maybe the students were trying to burrow out of their dorms, not knowing they could just walk out the front door. I don't know how that happened. It must must have done that by accident while I was trying to do some terrain adjustments. Okay, so that's freed up a little bit of space back here now. I'm going to move one of these over here because it felt really silly having two of these little buildings next to each other. I am a little bit worried about this road now though, having two different sports teams on one road. It's probably going to get even worse now, but thankfully I put in these footpath bridges when I first built this district, so those intersections don't actually have people walking over them, thank god. Could have been so much worse. I'm going to come back over to Carlisle City and do a little bit more building because I want to ramp up this population. So I'm going to work on some suburb roads around the edge of the waterfront here. They will have great land value, especially being next to a five star nature reserve as well. So I am going to do a little bit of suburban planning. So I've zoned in quite a lot of housing down here and hopefully once these ones on the end zone in it should pull the electricity across from here. I'm not quite sure whether that will reach. I might need to maybe add a tiny little bit more extra onto this road just to get it to pull it across. A bit cheeky doing it this way but it works. I'm also going to add a pathway across here so that people can get to the nature reserve a lot quicker on foot than going by car. So they still need industry even though we added all of these offices in earlier and it does look like none of these offices are having issues with staff so none of them are complaining that they haven't got enough staff. If anything some of them actually have more highly educated workers than they need which is good news. I often have the opposite problem. We might need to add a bit of industry somewhere. I don't really want to add any down here 
but what I might do is have a very small industrial complex just between the hills and the train line here so we can kind of build this area back and make it a little bit more industrial but still nice because I've got some nice assets that I can use and incorporate the electricity source into that somehow. I think this solar power plant works better in this space than the updraft tower because it's a lot shorter, it doesn't impede on the view quite as much and I can block it in with some other buildings around it. So I am going to remove this updraft tower for now but I'm not too concerned because we still have way more electricity than we need. If we need it in the future we can just put it back in. So I have these assets from the same creator that has made quite a lot of things that I'm using in this build and they're quite nice actually. They are industrial assets but they're very sleek and very clean and they don't have the same kind of grotty feel that some of the other industrial stuff has. So I'm going to add a few of these. I'm probably going to repeat them quite a lot just because there's only three. So I'm going to build up a bit of an industrial zone with these assets. There are a few others from the vanilla catalogue though that aren't too bad that we can also use. This asset here is actually quite nice. It's nowhere near as bad as some of the other industrial assets. So I'm going to pop a few of these in here too. I finally downloaded these concrete brushes. I spent a really long time trying to figure out what they actually work so I saw a lot of people using them and I could never figure out where to find them on the workshop. I was looking up concrete, asphalt, every single word that I could think to relate to what I was seeing people use in their builds and I finally figured out what they were. They are so handy because the painter doesn't always come with straight edges so it is very handy to fill in these kind of gaps here and make a nice clean edge. These are the same eco offices that I used in the other industrial area and I also use these a lot in Calathea because they are unique buildings, they actually attract a lot of tourists but they look like offices. I know it's a little bit cheeky squeezing these back here because technically they're 4x4 four four rather than 3x4 but they don't really have anything on the back other than some detailing. So I'm just going to line these up against the back of this, these buildings and just pretend that they don't have anything on the back. It's not like they're parking spaces or anything, so I'm not too worried. I think I might have to use a commercial piece down here because nothing else is really going to fit properly. one might do I don't really like the billboards on it but it's not as bad as it could be and I wonder if I have any one by one by four maybe one by three that actually fits kind of nice down there Framburger is an unusual name but we're gonna roll with it and I'm also gonna see if I can fit one down this side as well a long skinny one maybe fry guys yeah that will do and I'll just paint that bit in the middle with the concrete painter so they've got some industrial buildings they've got some commercial they've got some food places and some unique buildings that have actually got quite a lot of people coming to I'm gonna put a parking lot down here just so that we don't have cars parking on the road and uh, I think this one will probably be about the right size So I'm thinking if I remove these billboards from these buildings then they might end up looking like offices. Actually let's not put the probability at zero, let's put it at lower and then just refresh until we get one that we like. Yeah they look a bit more like um, offices now don't they? Let's reset that one a few times, I think blue is a good colour to go for. Let's try and get one that's blue and got no billboards. Perfect. So that kind of looks like those buildings are adjoined now. They look a little bit like offices. So it's kind of just blocking the view to the solar farm a little bit. I might even add a fourth one down there. There we go. That looks pretty good with four buildings across there. They look a little bit like offices. 
and that doesn't look too bad coming in on the train now but hopefully that should satisfy the industrial need for a bit i'm not a fan of this corner here so i'm actually going to connect it to the road over here so they have two different access points rather than just one the angles in this district are just slightly off all of them are just not quite the right angle. The one thing that I haven't done is change the name of the facility buildings and the stations and the schools and everything. So I'm going to go around quickly and change the names to all of the buildings that need changing. When it comes to this district here, I'm really not a fan of Cooper Heights and I was racking my brain to think of like what other things from like vampire related media could I use for this and there's the obvious things like Dracula, Nosferatu, I don't know how to spell that though so that would be interesting but my stupid brain immediately said call it Loka Heights after that infamous line in Twilight so I'm not going to ignore my impulsive thoughts so this is going to be Loka Heights. Okay, I think that I've just gone around and named everything. I've probably missed something. But now when I'm clicking on people around the city, I'll probably be able to tell exactly where they're going. Let's test that theory out. Right, let's pick a person. You. No. You. No. You. No. Come on, one of these people must be going to somewhere that I've just named. They're going to Queen Cemetery. There we go. I know where that person's going now. They're walking a really long way up here to the cemetery, which is a bit of a long walk. The last thing I want to do today is get the hotel chains up to level three because it's kind of stagnant around this 2800 mark and not all of the hotels are at 100% popularity. So I think I'm going to have to add some hotels to some different areas. I might add one near the baseball park so that people can come and stay if there's a match going on. While I'm over here, I'm actually going to add a crossing onto this junction because this junction is extremely busy and I'm sure that I can take a little bit of this park away so that I can put a crosswalk over the intersection. Now hopefully this should help the traffic out on this road a little bit so there won't be any people trying to cross the road and that won't add any extra pressure onto this intersection because it is very very busy. I might add a hotel around this area and possibly one in the city centre as well. I need to add quite a few hotels before I can get to the next level. So maybe this is a time where I can use the old inn because I can't really think of any other place where it would really be appropriate. So maybe I'll put one next to the entrance on either side and that will make it look a little bit more grand. It's obviously not gonna be doing very well for shopping because the shopping is miles away, but it's still fairly popular, 77%. I probably won't keep these hotels here forever. If we unlock some more appropriate ones, I'll swap them out. And let's put some hotels in around here. None of these hotels are really what I'm going for. I don't really wanna put a roadside motel in here. I don't think it's really that appropriate. Might have to put the town hostel in over here. This looks like this is gonna be the best one for this area. The small hotel will also work all right, but it's not really a bright green like this one is. So maybe I will add a couple of hostels back here just to get those numbers up. Not too fussed about keeping them there forever. I'll probably just delete them once we get to the next level. Well, it's kind of stagnant around the 3,800 mark. I'm gonna to have to add a million hotels just to get up to this next level. Let's add another few down the back here and see if that helps. Nope, stuck around the 4,000 mark. So let's just add some more of these in, see if that helps. <laughs> Looks like it's gone stagnant again. Let me have a look at the screens for this to see where the best place would be to put them. Maybe I could put a small one over here on this side of the road and maybe one over here as well. There we go. There we go. Okay, cool. So the last thing I'll do before finishing is have a look at what we've just unlocked. So we've got three new hotels, a city hotel. That's a decent sized building, very, very high capacity, 200 guests. And then we got a mountain lodge. Oh, that's pretty cool. That would be good to maybe replace some of the ones up on the hill in Loga Heights. And then we also got a boat hotel. Oh, this is gonna, it's gonna be interesting. Can't fit it anywhere up there. And there, mm, no, can't fit it there either. Mm, we might be able to use this part of the tile down here for that. Oh, wow. How is a boat hotel sinking? Do you need to be further out, further in? Oh, that's not good. Okay, so 
I think the plan for the next episode is going to be to get onto this piece of land here and to put the boat hotel in somewhere because I'm really excited to use that if I can get it to not sink because that seems a bit of a design flaw if your boat hotel as soon as you place it start sinking i wouldn't want to stay there but anyway i'm gonna end this episode here it looks like i haven't really done much today because i'm focusing on much smaller things so probably the biggest thing we did today was to expand on carlisle city as it's now called obviously it looks quite sparse at the moment it's nowhere near as fleshed out as i want it to be a lot of empty gaps and you will know that i don't like having gaps in suburban areas and i will fill them with pathways and trees so you best believe this district is not finished yet and obviously this high rise that's kind of stepping down I, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this it's nowhere near finished i'm sorry if you don't like it i don't really care if you don't like it because i'm not done with it yet anyway but what I am very happy with is the back of these office buildings along the train line. I think they look really, really smart from both angles. It's going to be quite a nice thing to see coming into the city on the train. Actually, the first thing you see as you come in is this industrial bit with the solar farm. But then you see the red brick buildings and the fancy office buildings with the beautiful windows. You can kind of see through into the city through here with all of the high rise housing. And then you can see through to this really grand commercial building. So it gives quite a nice impression as you move into the city. But the other thing we did over here was to build this little industrial complex because they were really demanding more industrial. Even after adding the offices, it wasn't quite enough. So there's some custom and vanilla assets in the middle. Try to keep this nice and sleek, this area. It's a little bit of commercial down here as well. These ones are meant to look like offices and some unique building offices on the corner for a little bit of an entertainment boost. We also tried to improve the look of Swan Square, as I've called it now, after Bella Swan, because this is the most awkward thing to decorate that I've ever tried to decorate. I hated doing this. The style of building that I was trying to go for, my options were so limited and the space is so awkward and there's so much going on around it that I don't even care anymore. I don't want to think about this district. It's probably one of my least favorite areas that I've ever built. I try to go with mostly kind of American themed buildings, whether that's the Art Deco style or more of the mid-century modern with these kind of flat roofs. The garish colors were a little bit difficult to work with, but I'm beyond caring at this point. So the only way I could figure out to fix this bus stop that wasn't really a bus stop was to add a bus stop. <laughs> I know that probably sounds really, really silly, but the game seemed to think that there was a bus stop on this road when there wasn't. So I couldn't get rid of this little lay-by and it was driving me crazy. All of these people were standing there waiting for a bus that was never gonna come. It is nice to see everyone wearing the sports team's colors though. Pretty much everyone's walking around wearing purple of some sort. And I'm hoping that that's to do with the baseball team being purple. And speaking of baseball, this is the baseball ground. This space was a little bit awkward because in between like a raised highway and a train track and a city park and it's on the edge of two different districts. So trying to figure out something to put in this space was a little bit difficult, but this sports pitch actually fits in here perfectly. They've had a few matches so far and they won every single one, which I'm very proud of them. Go sports team gave this district a name finally, Loka Heights. So I feel like this district is actually finished now and I don't have to think about it anymore. And then over here, we just expanded the campus a little bit, finally got up to the second level of the campus as a recognized university. And I was able to add in a few more assets, including the gymnasium, the cafeteria, and a few more decorative pieces like the fountain and the outdoor study hall that no one really seems to be using. I extended the campus area onto the rest of this land because I realised we really boxed ourselves in here, didn't have anywhere near enough space to put all of the big assets that come with the campus DLC. So instead of this being a suburb down here, it's now going to be just campus area. So I've moved the dorms down here to make them a bit more private, I've put a key around here to give them two different levels, and there's a nice road coming down in the middle lined with acacia trees. This area will be filled out more in the future. I need to add more dorms as we get more students in. And I also need to continue the key along this way as well, but that just wasn't a priority today. Once we get this tile here, I'll extend the normal part of the city out this way instead. And the first thing I did today that I nearly just forgot about was to add in a few more assets to the farming district. This has been very, very self-sufficient so far. I haven't really had to do anything to it, but I added in the slaughterhouse, 
a few more of the workers barracks to bring the efficiency up and I moved some of the assets around because this area needed to have this massive asset. Oh my god while I was in cinematic mode we leveled up on the university and I didn't even realize because I pressed escape to get out and it got rid of the notification but we got to level three. Oh, I'm so happy about that it must have been the end of the academic year as I was doing that walkthrough Oh, that's amazing. That's even more plans for next episode. We can add in those new buildings. We can try and get up to level four, maybe even level five, who knows? I'm very, very happy about that. Really positive thing to end the episode on. I'm sorry that this episode has been a bit aimless. I've done so much building recently and especially with my Calathea series too, everything is so structured and everything is like, right, we're gonna do this today and then we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do this. I got back to this city today and just thought, what am I actually doing? I knew roughly where I wanted to be in the future, but I didn't actually have a significant thing in mind to do. So I guess episode 10 is a filler episode, if you wanna call it that. But with the unlocking of those hotels just now, we have a very clear plan for the next episode and that is to do some touristy bits out on the seafront so we can put the boat hotel in. I'm thinking like a high rise Miami style city with lots of really tall buildings, lots of leisure and tourism and a lot of unique buildings as well. And because there is a train line down here, we don't have to worry about it adding pressure to our existing train network. We can have its own stop down here for tourists to come in and out of and we can pull the metro down and I may possibly even bring a tram or a monorail down here because I haven't used a monorail yet and I really want to so I didn't get a tile today I will be doing that maybe next episode maybe the episode after I don't want to rush into buying it because I don't want to make the wrong choice I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of my loyal supporters I never thought that I would actually have people who wanted to see my videos and people who are waiting for the next one to come out or people that would comment on all of the videos but honestly it just it makes me so happy every time I get a comment or a new subscriber or I see the same name pop up again or someone binges my videos and comments on every single one of them because that was really making me laugh because I do really really love making these videos and I really really love this game and I'm so happy that I get to share it with other people and that I can inspire some of you to build your own things. The main thing I wanted to do with these videos is to help other people find the joy that I found with this game. A childlike sense of wonder and amazement, just pure joy. If I can help just one other person find that feeling, then I feel like I've done my job. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.